Hello guys, Sir Grandalot here, have a little bit of time, but I decided that I would do my Autopets tier list. Yeah, <laughs> no, everyone was looking for this. Uh, I've been playing Autopets quite a lot recently. Uh, it's fun, it's fun. Let, let, let's get going with this tier list. Mm, Ant. Uh, Ant uh, is basically here in the early game, but then it becomes completely useless later during the match. Mm, I think it's the kind of unit that I would put here. Like, if you see one on turn one, it, it's a good pick. Otherwise, mm. uh, Badger around here. Bad here. I, I know there are some fun shenanigans that uh, can be done with the Badger. Uh, like, you put it at the back, you put an Ant on it, not an Ant, a B on it. Um, sometimes you win the matches that you would otherwise uh, lose or draw, but you, you can also do some memes putting it at the front uh, with like a turtle right behind it or a Nox that already has a melon armor behind it. You, you can do a few things, but it, it's really a lot of effort for not a lot of game. Hmm. Maybe here, maybe here. It's it's not an awful unit to begin with. Not an awful unit. Uh, the, the difficult part uh, about an auto pet uh, tier list, uh, super auto pet. I'm sorry. Uh, is that some units like the, okay? This one for me is a scarab, but according to the game, it's a beetle. Like turn one, it it's here. It's one of the best things that you can buy. It's a two free, and it also has some minor upside that can actually give you a win on turn two. But, but then later in the game it's just useless. Uh, I would put it around the same tier as the Ant. Like you don't win a run by having Ant, uh, Scarabs, Slash Beetles, stuff like that, but they're solid enough in the early game that they will allow you to avoid, uh, potentially avoid early losses or actually bring home some wins. Which is pretty good. Uh, Bison, I don't rate it very highly because it only works with this guy, basically. With, without this guy, Bison is very, very difficult to start scaling. Uh, the turn that you discover it, like if you discover it on turn 3, uh, no wait, turn uh, 5, it's a 6-6, six, six, which is potentially one of the units with the biggest amount of stats you can get around that time, but not, not particularly good unless you have this guy. So I, I would put him here, it's a bit limited. I, I absolutely despise this thing. Uh, stats are not awful, not completely awful, the ability is useless, sometimes it's a negative. I actually lost some matches due to its ability hitting things that it was not supposed to hit. Um, I despise it to the point that I will leave it here. There are some units that are worse, very likely, but I absolutely hate the pufferfish. Uh, bird... Uh, probably around here. Not as solid as those, not absolute trash, but... This one pretty good. Um... Probably between A and B. Probably. Uh, later I, may, I might have to do a bit, of, a few adjustments, because like, if I end up having a lot of pets here, not a lot here, maybe I, I may actually move it up. But good unit, it has scaling built in. Um, it can be decent by itself, it fits very well in builds with dogs, so it's very good. Uh, Caterpillar... Mm. Yeah, it's between these two tiers. Easily between these two tiers. I, I, it would probably be the one that I put here first. Um, it, dis it helps you to discover higher tier units, and it has some insane endgame potential, all at the cost of buying a slightly weak unit uh, on potential turn 3 or sometimes in the early game. So it's really strong, really, really powerful. Uh, its only downfall is the butterfly doesn't get a melon armor or any, or those sort of buffs, but overall very very strong. Camel 
I like the idea of a camel. I wish the stats were a bit higher. Because it needs a bit too much help. But it's a, it's a solid unit. Solid unit. Cat, uh, we'll put it here. It's a little bit situational. Because it's not a scaling engine like the T-Rex. Uh, uh, that every time, every turn, you get extra stats. Um, sometimes you just roll on the shop several times. And, and you only get... <laughs> <laughs> Garlic armor, melon, chili, no buffs, and the cat stays there and feels upset. But all in all, very, very solid uh, auto pet. Uh, hmm. I've tried to make it work, it has some potential, but. No. Cow here, cow is so good. It does not fit every team, because in some teams you don't have an, a, a slot uh, that is available for cycling. That's why I would not put the cow here, but all in all, the cow is really, really strong. Crab... Uh, mm, somewhere here, between B and A. It's definitely better than the camel on average, but it needs other things to go... Uh, to go well in the team. Uh, but it's easy to build for a, for a crab, uh, definitely easy, so pretty solid unit. Craycat? No. Um, I will always keep it, turn one. Crocodile can, can, can steal some victories. I wish stats were a little bit better, uh, or that maybe it dealt a little bit more damage, but it's an okay unit. Deer, probably around the same level. Uh, actually, do I prefer deer or camel? It, it's situational. Like, camel would probably be around here, deer would probably be around here. It's a bit situational. The advantage is that you don't really want to buff the deer. But you also don't want to peel the deer to get the buffs. Because the advantage of the deer is that it can get the hits from flying damage. And uh, it can be used as like a one single damage to remove melon armor and he, he trades for a scorpion probably very close in tier level very very close dodo extremely strong <laughs> mm. yeah yeah in, in its current state dodo is too strong just too strong uh where is the rooster yeah th th this is broken this is absolutely broken and I, I hope the guys uh, behind the game will fix this interaction. Uh, I don't mind the rooster. The rooster is actually okay because the stats are very low. And the chick that is supposed to have very low hit points. They're fairly easy to counter, but the, the, this interaction is too strong. Dodo needs to be changed. Puppy, excellent. Excellent, excellent. If it was tier 3, uh, I would put it here. But considering that it's tier 2, you can get, you can find him extremely early and you can start scaling very easily. It, it's just an extremely strong unit. And it, th this is like the <laughs> perfect, <laughs> absolutely perfect combination. If you can find, uh, I always call him puppy, but it's actually doggy. If you can find doggy, uh, but this dude... This dude is like, oh my god, basically you, you always have one or two slots available for cycling buffs and you're in a good spot. Dolphin, I would put him around here. Uh, good stats. Very similar effect to the crocodile, but I prefer the stats on the dolphin. Hmm. Dragon, easy. Uh, late game, takes a while to get going and basically you only play with three units plus the dragon, but extremely strong. Camel, not great, but I'll probably put it in between here. Um, it actually gave me some wins thanks to his buffs. So it, it's not trash here, I would not put it here. Duck is cool. Solid, very, very solid. Uh, buffing the right units can be a game changer, so it's very strong. Uh, Eagle, somewhere in here. But by the way, having most of the pets in B and C uh, means that the game is fairly well balanced. Because if everything was either S tier or trash tier, the game would be garbage. 
but most pets being in the center, uh, I think it's a good uh, balancing act uh, from the devs. A decent amount of stats for a 5 star unit, no scaling, uh, some great potential upsides, uh, sometimes peeling it can win you the game straight away. It, yeah, it's somewhere in between. The fact that it's RNG reliant um, makes me lower it a little bit, but it's a solid unit. Don't don't skip the, the eagle when you see it. Elephant, yeah. Don't like it. Don't play it. Fish, very very strong. Uh, I would actually put it here as a level one uh, unit, tier one unit, because not only does it have solid stats, but you can level it up buff the rest of your team and then you sell it whereas the scarab leveling it up doesn't do anything uh, the beetle so i actually value the fish a little bit higher uh, i didn't say anything about the bat but the bat is just extremely strong uh, there will be some turns during which you win because of extra damage that the back and the bat allows you to deal and then in the end the game when you have a level 2 or 3 bet and you start removing melon armors and all sort of other armors, it, it's just amazing. Uh, not very strong. Not very strong. Uh, the pink flamingo, which I, I always tell my daughter, my little daughter, the, the reason why we call pink flamingos like that is because they're pink, so we call them pink, and they're flamingos, so we call them flamingos. And my little daughter is always very confused about it. Uh, I'm, I'm confused as well, but the point that I'm trying to make is if I have four units I need to fill the field uh, I have three gold left and there is a flamingo in the store. I'm okay It's not a pick that I'm like, oh my god, I need to get it, but it's fine And it's especially decent if like you use it as a filler and you find a pill the following turn because you're basically paying an extra one gold uh, for two apples, essentially. But it's a guy. Uh, here. I think that guy and this guy are, are a bit problematic in the game. Uh, for me, the, where is the other culprit? Where is the other culprit? I don't see the tiger. Oh, here. Okay, these three dudes and these two dudes are the only problems in the game right now. Uh, Tiger... Uh, the idea is neat, because there are many interactions that is fun to copy. Uh, this is not a fun interaction to copy. And the idea of buffing a unit a lot by using a weaker unit behind it is okay. Even this does basically the same thing. Uh, but its interaction with the rooster is just over the top. So, in terms of balance, here there is something to be done, here there is something to be done. Uh, they're all extremely strong units. Uh, probably run defining. Uh, the, the Dodo being available very early is a problem, and the overall interaction between those three is a bit of a problem. Giraffe is alright, is alright can give you a little bit of scaling in the early game. Um, it can help you quite a bit behind the Dodo or behind uh, this guy, a camel. Um, it's alright, it's alright, not the best. Goat? No. no. No, I don't like it, it's not very good. Uh, this one, no, I will put it around here. Just, the, the stats are very low, but it requires to survive to actually do something good. So. If by any chance you find him early and you put it at the front, followed by a monkey, and you have monkey, gorilla, and you give him man, it works, but that, that's a lot of work for a tier 6 unit. Yeah, I, I know the meme videos about the hedgehog are fun, but I, I don't like it as a unit. Uh, it has a slightly the same problem as the badger. Uh, it can win you some matches that you would otherwise lose or draw, but... No, don't like it. Cheek, very strong. Uh, the turn you buy it, it's incredibly strong. Uh, at, at level 1. And at level 2 it gives you some decent scaling, plus 2 plus 2 turn on the unit that you want. Whereas the monkey, you're forced to buff the unit at the front. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I will basically always get a cheek uh, 
on turn... Uh, uh, well, the earliest is turn 3, but I would say between turn and 7. If I have a slot available and I see a cheek, uh, it, it's hard to pass it. Hippo is very good. A bit squishy. Uh, the fact that it can counter very easily token strategies makes me move it a little bit higher. Just a little bit higher. Because he's not only a strong unit, it's a strong unit that counters many other units. So, if you see a Hippo early in the game, um, think about it. Because you solve the problem of ant, uh, ants. You solve Fly's problem, uh, V's problem, token, and you just demolish them. Especially with a garlic. Horse is... Um, yeah, I think I will put him there. Yeah, yeah. It's just that. It's just that. It, you can steal some time victories in the early game, like in the very, very early game, if you pick all the units that spawn other units, but overall, not very good. Kangaroo, uh, uh, here. Needs a bit of help to get going, and then it's it's a very good unit. Uh, especially combined with the camel, like the interaction is amazing. But they're, they're a bit small to begin with. They're a bit small, which is fine considering their tier. But it's not like, oh, I see a camel, uh, I get it, I win the run. No, it, it's not like that. Ladybug is solid, not as solid uh, as a fish. But probably on a similar level as these two guys, as far as uh, tier 1 units go. Uh, the reason is that it's not as strong, uh, but it can scale a little bit. And in a video that I uploaded uh, a few days ago, the one where I had uh, 10 wins 7 times in a row, well, it was split in two videos, but there were 7 runs in a row, I had one run that I won because I focused on an early game build uh, um, with uh, Ladybug and the... Where is the Tabby Cat? I don't see... Oh, here. Ladybug and Tabby Cat. And people try to make uh, the so-called food build work in the late game, but in the late game it scales a bit poorly unless you find this cat. And if you have this cat, uh, you, 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 any build uh, works with food. But the beauty of Ladybug and Tabby Cat, uh, and even the Scarab uh, Beetle to a certain point, is you can completely ignore the end game. Like, you don't worry about tier 5 and tier 6 unit. You try to get 10 wins within 11, 12, uh, 13 rounds, just buffing your Tabby Cat, uh, who then buffs the rest of your team, and the Ladybug gets buffed in the, uh, in the process. It's a very, very good early game build, but it's only an early game build. Uh, you have chances of transitioning, because let's say that you find a Poodle um, or a T-Rex, then okay, you, you can try to swap things around a bit and transition to into a late game build, but if you have like a level 2 Ladybug, a, this guy, maybe a Rabbit, uh, you can try to focus on getting 10 wins within 12, uh, 13 turns uh, and just ignore scaling units. But it's something that it, it, it's the kind of call that you need to make uh, match by match, and then it, it takes a bit of experience and the shop luck uh, to understand when it works and when it doesn't. Uh, this one, no, I, I really don't like it. I really don't like it. I, I've seen it work well, but it's. It, it's RNG dependent and it's tier 6. A dolphin is not as strong because this one scales with attack, but you get the dolphin several turns earlier. So if it was a lower tier, I would bump it up a bit, but I, I really don't like it. A llama is fine. No, not very good. Like, I would usually take any of these. Uh, this one. Or, or this one over a llama. And 
Uh, I made it to 10 wins and 9 wins a few times with the uh, Alama build until turn, I would say, 9. Just letting it get a bit bigger. And then transition to a regular 5-pet uh, five team. Five team. Uh, after the Lama was already beefy enough, but... It's like a lot of work for the same result that you can get from other builds, so I don't rate it very highly. Um... I would actually do this. Although they're very similar. Like, the advantage of, uh, of this thing, I don't remember the name, is... Uh, sometimes you have three pets, you get this guy, and then the other one that you play gets a buff. It's okay, but it's not even that good. Uh, Mammoth for me is quite okay, actually. Because in a lot of builds, uh, you have one available slot. And you end the turn, you put that Mandu at the front, uh, it can kill small spi spiders, it can kill um, uh, scorpions, it can remove uh, melon armor, and it buffs the rest of your team. It's not bad. You find a pill, that's a great buff for everyone in the team. Uh, you give him the mushroom, it, it's okay. Uh, I, I made it to 10 wins several times with a with a mammoth at the front. It, it would not be my first pick as far as tier 6 units go. But for example, if you already have a very well set up team that is scaling by itself, and you find a dragon, uh, in order to make the dragon work you need to sell one of your units. Because dragon needs 3 pets, an empty slot and then the dragon. Some builds don't, don't have that available. And you just put a mammoth at the front. He's fine. <laughs> this one, <laughs> it's either here or here. <laughs> so I guess I will put it here. It's very situational. Sometimes you have a build where half of your team has a water, uh, has uh, the melon armor, and, and you're like, no, 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 no. And sometimes none of your units have melon armor, and so you're like, yeah. And then you start picking up all the turtles. Monk is extremely strong. Probably between here and here, but I will put it here. Mosquito, solid, not amazing. Uh, this one, probably similar level as the gorilla. Yeah. Otter is pretty good, we'll put here. Pretty solid. Uh, especially when you can combine it with uh, fish, uh, beetle, or what is that guy? With, with the mosquito, it can be fine. If I can avoid using it with the fish, I like to do so, because the fish, uh, you, you, you want to sell it after leveling it up. Whereas a mosquito, you may use it a little bit longer for the damage, if you level it up. A ladybug, you could use it a little bit longer. But it's a solid unit, nonetheless. Ah, well, it's fine. <laughs> you buy it, it fills the spot, and then you sell it. Mm. Probably here, just because it's a lot of stats. Uh, sometimes you discover one of uh, the, the sheep uh, ram uh, thingy on turn 3. You buy it, you put it on the field, uh, and especially if you already have a dog, uh, you just win 2, maybe 3 rounds, because it, it's difficult to handle for many teams uh, uh, if I don't have garlic or if I don't have a good team. Ox is good. I'll probably put it here. Solid, very solid. Probably between A and B. Mm, actually, let me think. Yeah, I think I will value Ox a little bit higher. Yeah. Uh, because tier 3 is very good. And as a standalone unit, uh, the fact that it buffs his own attack and gets the armor is exceptional. You can also do some shenanigans using Peel. Uh, like, you peel the unit in front of the ox, and the ox gets the permanent armor, and it's, it's amazing. Parrot? No, I don't like it. Absolute garbage tier for me. Uh, it, okay, in some very specific teams it can go up a bit, but no. I, I, no. I hate the peacock. Uh, it's my least favorite tier to... Uh, yeah, tier 2 unit, um, very little attack, 
slightly high defense and he needs to get hit to actually get his scaling going. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's awful. Uh, if I really have nothing else in the store and I have one or two ducks and I can buy the peacock after, buy, after buffing it, then sure, it can be okay between turn 3 and 7, but no. Uh, Penguin, I like it a lot. I will put it here. It's a buffing engine that works quite well. It has no RNG involved. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit uh, harder to make it work compared to other buffing engines, but it's solid. It's pretty good. Piggy here. It's okay. The Poodle... Mm, I'll probably put it here. If it was a tier 5, I would put it here. But being a tier 4 unit that you can discover very, very early in the game, you can discover him as soon as turn uh, 5, um, it, it makes it an amazing unit. Because it's so early, they can, you can just uh, start to rearrange your team in order to have all the buffs work uh, accordingly. The music is a bit loud now, maybe a little bit. Let me lower the volume, volume a little bit. Uh, so yeah, Poodle, really, really strong. Puppy, I'll put it here. A self-scaling unit that has no requirements and you can discover it very early. Really, really strong. A uh, rabbit uh, here. It, it has potential, very, very good potential, but to me it's not as strong as Tabby Cat in the sense that it's easier to have an early game uh, food build work and give you 10 victories with Tabby Cat rather than with Rabbit. If you can have both, they synergize pretty well together, but out of the two I would prefer to have a Tabby Cat. Uh, red item. <laughs> no, I never get it. There, I don't remember the last time that I won because I had a, uh, a rat at the front, but I do remember the times that I lost because I, uh, I had a rat. Uh, <laughs> my opponent received the spawn rat, and I also won a few matches because I received the rat, so no. No, no, no. A rhino, very good. Uh, it's probably similar level as the hippo. Um, the advantage of Hippo is that you can find it earlier, because it's tier 4. Rhino is tier 5. Uh, Rhino completely demolishes certain builds, uh, especially the rooster. Like, if Rhino can kill the rooster and survive, then it one-shots the universe, and it's glorious. Uh, this one is okay. It's not amazing, though. It's not amazing. If you can get Cat and, and this dinosaur, you're going to have a good time. But it's not that amazing. Scorpion is really good. A bit situational. And the problem with the Scorpion is that there is no way to tell if your positioning is correct before you fight. There are some things that are completely wrong. Like a Scorpion at the very, very, very back is usually not the, the, the right decision to make. Because you're not winning with a Scorpion at the back and, unless it's huge, unless it's, I don't know, 50-50. But a 1-1 one -one Scorpion or a small Scorpion at the back, uh, what it does is, if, if the match ends up in a 1v1, they trade evenly, hopefully the other guy doesn't, doesn't, sorry, hopefully the other guy doesn't have a melon armor, you get a draw. But there are some situations where the opposing team has a very, very big unit at the front, you want the Scorpion in the first place. Uh, sometimes they have a very big unit in first for in the first position, but there's Melon Armor. You, you want the Scorpion in second place. Sometimes we have a small unit at the front. You don't want the Scorpion to trade with that. Sometimes then the big unit is the second one, and it could have or not have Melon Armor. So... And you have no way of knowing it. Because it's not that you played against uh, someone you have played the previous turn, like in other auto chess games. You have no idea what they're going to do with their units. Uh, you don't know what composition you are going to face. Uh, so, in terms of value, it can be here, but the fact that 
sometimes you have no idea to honestly put him in, in a correct place. Uh, drops him down a little bit, but uh, it's still a very good unit. Seal, I would say be around here. It's alright. Not amazing, but it's alright. Shark is good. Shark is good. It's exceptional in certain builds, useless in others, so I cannot rate it too highly. But in the right build is amazing, just like the camel, kangaroo, that sort of stuff. Shrimp, uh, same tier as the rabbit. Uh, the advantage of the shrimp is that you can get it very early in the match. And if between turn, you, you can find him as soon as level, uh, as turn 2. And if between turn 3 and, I don't know, 6 or 7, doing a bit of buy and sell of units, uh, you can get a decent amount of buffs and they end up on the correct unit like for example a dog um, it can lead you to several wins in the uh, mid game and allows you to have a smoother transition to the late game so it's pretty solid I would not put it here but definitely here uh, skunk is so situational let's say here uh, against certain builds it's amazing Against Tavares it goes down a bit. It depends on... Is there a famous streamer who just got 10 wins 3 times in a row, running crab every single time? Oh, then everyone is going to start playing the crab. You want a lot of this. Oh, otherwise it goes here. It, it's okay. The fact that it's tier 4 is a bit annoying. There are so many better units you can get on tier 4, that when you discover a skunk it always feels uber bad. <laughs> this one goes either here or here. I think in general it can be here. Uh, it's an insane amount of buffs. And unless you have a really, really, really insane team uh, and you're really expecting to win the following turn, when you see a snail in the store, you, you lock it. Because the upside of... Uh, of the upside of losing, which sounds weird, and then giving an insane buff to everyone in your team can make a huge difference. A huge, a huge difference, especially in builds with uh, the dog, that are very happy to see units being bought and sold, bought and sold, or with the dodo and the rooster, but really any, any team uh, is very happy to see a snail in the store before going to battle. Uh, Snake is excellent. Really, really excellent. Uh, it works incredibly well with Tiger, but even by itself is very good. When you have a beefy unit at the front, being able to shoot two, three or eight times, whatever, in the mid to late game can be extremely valuable. Uh, some people hold on to their snakes a bit too long, because whenever unit is a 50-50, having a, snakes, a snake that shoots out tiny <laughs> amounts of damage is not that great. Uh, although we can remove melon armor here and there. But very, very good unit. I, I would not put it here. I would not put it here because it's not, oh, I see a snake, I think I'm going to get 10 wins. It's like, no, I see a snake, it's going to help my team a lot. Uh, spider is... <sighs> Probably here. The thing with the spider that annoys me a bit is that it's one of the most RNG based units in the game. Um, the other one is the eagle. The point with the eagle is that in a battle, whatever you drop is not going to make a an insane difference. Because let's say that you have your eagle at the front, it dies, it spawns a mem, it's like pretty good, it's like a 6-5, it spawns a 2-6, it spawned a 2-6, and the 2-6 gave plus 2 plus 2 to everyone in your team. Th that's amazing for a tier 5 unit. But there is nothing that really ends the game on the spot. There are times that a spider, considering that it's very low level, you can find one extremely early, there are times that it dies, it spawns a turtle, you win an early match. It dies, it spawns a sheep, you win an early match. It, it dies, it spawns an... some time... I had an outrageous thing happening. Uh, a spider died, 
and it had a bee on it. It spawned the bee and then an ox. So my pet attacked the bee. The bee died. The ox that spawned by, uh, from the spider got the attack buff and the melon armor buff. It was absolutely outrageous and I lost that round. It was an early round and you cannot handle that kind of thing. So it annoys me a little bit that it has so much RNG involved into it. But it's a fairly good unit. Uh, it's overall 4-4 four, four worth of stats, at the very least, split on two bodies. And sometimes it can be worth to try the high roll with the peel. You try to peel it uh, when you are in the store, if depending on your build. Like, if you have a very, very, very bad build and you need some high roll to put you back uh, on track, you can try to high roll a, a ram or a turtle or um, whatever. It, it's good. Uh, squirrel is awful. Squirrel is awful. Uh, they need to add something like food is cheaper or you buy food, you get back some gold or I don't know. It, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like. You fill your shop with food, and you have this unit that you want to sell because it's trash. It's a choo-choo. So, uh, no, it's awful. This one I will put in here. Uh, I would probably change the stats if I was uh, in the developers. Uh, because getting an extra gold attorney is extremely strong, and the fact that it has a 3-4 body is amazing for, for a turn 2 unit. It trades with pretty much everything, evenly plus you get the the extra gold. Uh, it should be a little bit smaller, like a 2-4, a 3-3, something like that. Uh, I, I love this one. Most of the time I will get a swan if I see it on turn 2. This one, a bit underrated. Like many people trash on this and think like, oh my god, this is absolute garbage. It's actually okay in several in several builds, it's okay, but even in general, considering that it's something that you can get turn free. Wait, is the volume of the music too loud? Oh my god. Maybe a little bit. Uh, the fact that you can get it very early, his stats are not very good, but not super trash. And he starts buffing the health of the rest of your team can be very valuable. Like, you can often... Uh, steal some wins in the mid-game just because of the amount of health that you got on some units. Turtle is amazing. Turtle, I will put Turtle here. Because Turtle works in two ways. You play the Turtle, you peel it, meaning you give Watermelon to anyone you want, and it's something that you can do very, very early in the game, because it's just a tier 3 unit. So if you have an early scaling unit like Puppy, Doggy, or even a tier 4 unit that can scale well, you, you just do this. You put the turtle in front, you peel it, and you have a very early melon. Uh, but the, it also has the other option of leveling it up, and suddenly you have level 2. Maybe you have level 3, and you can start to do some shenanigans, especially with the virus. So it's a, it's a really strong unit. Uh, between here and here, but I think the fact that you can get it early in the game It's valuable the whole game and it's great when you level it up um, it, it, Oh, I moved the window for me it rates incredibly incredibly high T-Rex is insane. Maybe a little bit too insane, but it's fine, but the, its downside is pretty relevant pretty pretty relevant so you need to make sure that you have a team that doesn't care about doing buy and sell of units, so it doesn't really fit too well with dog. It fits extremely well with puppy. And after after a dinosaur, you basically rely just on leveling up units and using food buffs. But it, it's amazing. Uh, well, is good. I would put it around here. Maybe even here? It's somewhere in between. I think I will put it here. Because stats-wise, very solid, and it also allows you to do some incredible shenanigans. Uh, like a whale with a spider in front of it can generate an insane amount of value. 
um, whale with uh, the ram, whale with even just an ant. Uh, it's very good. It's a very, very solid unit. And I think that six hit points is the best we can get in turn, uh, for tier three units. So it also fits a build uh, with the crab. And you can put a flamingo. It's very good. It's a very, very good unit. Uh, Worm. Uh, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Worm. Because sometimes it works extremely well. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. And... Probably somewhere in here in between. Uh, I think that the favorite tier 4... And it's relatively easy to scale, makes me want to put it here. Yeah. Because, I mean, the gorilla in theory is better, but the stats don't grow. So sometimes his ability just doesn't trigger. The, the, the thing here, the worm, is fine. Sometimes you get lucky and you get all the food every turn and every time that you buy the salad one of the buffs goes to the worm and so it becomes insane. Uh, I think it's a very well balanced unit though. Uh, if it was tier 3 it would be insane. It would be broken at tier 3. Tier 4 is fine. So now let me look. Now, now that I lay down the whole list let me see if there is anything that I would like to change. I'm a bit sleepy. My daughter had a very questionable night last night. She woke up a million times. I may consider moving the pink flamingo up a notch. Maybe giraffe here. Hmm. And I wonder if I should put the crab here. Because the, the beauty of the crab is that it's also a cheap unit to build. It does not rely on being leveled up. It's that you get the crab and you put it behind something strong and the crab is good. You just need to find uh, uh, the meat or to have this guy behind it. And you will be doing extremely well. Hmm. Yeah, somewhere in between. I think I will move it here. I tend to play crab a lot. It's a very strong unit. Here, yeah, I'm fine with this. My problem with fish is that sometimes I hold on to fishes uh, too long. Um, yesterday during my stream, I actually lost a run uh, because I just could not sell my fish that was just one fish away from leveling up. And I did not find one for like 10 turns and I basically threw away the run, but after a while in my head I was just like, no, I want to reroy <laughs> until I find a fish because this is bullshit. And it was bullshit, I lost. Um, yeah, I think this looks about right for me. It looks about right. Probably will move Mammoth up a little bit. Because honestly, if, if I want to... If I need a carry in my team, I'd, I don't wait until turn 6. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't wait until level 6 units, so I will not pick this one. And if my team is already decent and I need to fill the field with someone, it will always be a mammoth over, <laughs> over this guy. So there are some situations where this guy is better, but they're a bit limited. So I actually prefer the mammoth over that guy. Yeah, it's about right. So, that's my my tier list for Autopets. Uh, I'm sorry if every now and then the music was a bit too loud, but in theory I have FUBAR set up in a way that all the songs should have the same volume, but theory and practice are not always the same. Uh, this was my tier list for Super Autopets. Having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I hope you're having fun with it as well. I if I put one of your favorite pets at the very bottom, please don't get upset. Um, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye, take care.